Hello everybody and welcome back to the Conan Chronologies here and today we are in Conan the Warrior and we're going to be talking about the story Red Nails. What is actually kind of interesting on a, uh oh, what did my hair just do? Oh god, it's getting worse. One of the things that actually surprised me this time going through this is that, uh, like, this apparently takes place in Sukhmet? Sukhmet or something like that? And so if we look at the map that's inside the book here, it's down here, okay? For some reason, I always thought that this story took place over probably here somewhere. But according to this, it takes place right here. What's weird about that is, I mean, I guess Zuthal's pretty close to that. I don't know. To find um, an ancient civilization. I mean, I guess Conan books are full of ancient civilizations. Whatever. Backstory. This is the last Conan story that Robert E. Howard wrote and finished. And whether it got the cover of Weird Tales because of the lurid sensuality in the story or if it was because they were just trying to be fucking cool and do the right thing um, because Robert E. Howard died before this issue came out and he died and I'm sure I've talked about this before but um, his mother was really sick and um, she wasn't going to make it and so he went to the hospital talked to the doctors talked to his mom went outside, got in the car, pulled a gun out of the glove compartment, and and um, died. Very, very sad. Horrible fucking thing. So, this is like, the end, um, chronologically speaking, of the work Howard did um, in the universe of Conan. But, um, we're not quite at the end of the chronological life of Conan. We still have some stuff to do. But Red Nails is a really fun story. And again, you like think of what could have been. You think of what would have been next. And Robert E. Howard was already kind of over Weird Tales, the magazine, because they owed him a shit ton of money and they weren't paying him when they should have been paying him. He was getting fed up. And even though he loved writing the Conan stories, he couldn't afford to spend his time writing, writing Conan stories. So when he knew he could, he could write Westerns, he could write fight stories, he could write Far East tales and all this other shit from magazines and know that he was going to get paid from those magazines. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's such a fucking like bummer, you know? And like, to be fair, Robert E. Howard's other shit is really good. Like the El Borac stuff is really good. The sailor Steve Costigan stuff is really good. Um, Solomon Kane stuff is good. Um, Bran McMorn stuff is really good. Um, the Cole stories were good too. Um, just like, there's a lot of really good shit he did. He was a very, very good writer. Those things out of the way. We're in this place now. And this story is cool because it has kind of like two parts to it that are really kind of different and the more I'm thinking about it <clears throat> the more I'm thinking about it I could see this being a thing Howard does but for some reason in this story it seems so much more severe than it does in other ones meaning he'll have a place that is very different from the place where the story ends up the story starts in a place different and again, this is another one of those stories that I like a lot better when Conan is discovering things kind of at the same rate we're discovering things. Instead of opening the story up with a shit ton of backstory, we're opening the story up plain in the middle of action. 
but basically we have Conan following um, Valeria of the Red Brotherhood. And Valeria is who they based, or at least the name, they based the um, his love interest in Conan the Barbarian movie. Um, she was Valeria. But Valeria is a pirate that he knew from back in the day, and um, he wants to follow her around. You know? And, I don't know, like, call that creepy, call it romantic. Um, I guess it depends on how you feel about it. So they're in the fucking jungle and shit, okay? It's fucking crazy. And then, like, a giant fucking, like, dinosaur monster starts chasing them, and they fucking run up a tree, and the thing's coming at them, and all this other shit. It's just, it's fucking brilliant, and, like, it's so exciting, and, um, everything that happens, and it just boggles my mind. I'm like, so if there's these, like, giant dinosaur monsters, why aren't they all over the world of Conan? How come it's just in this one jungle? I don't understand. But, um, you know, there's geographical things that I just don't get. So, after they... Um, and I'm not going to spoil how everything happens, because I want you guys to read the story, because it's really, really good. When they leave <clears throat> this situation, they find this lost city that looks, like, all fucked up on the outside and just old and ancient, the whole thing. And they manage to get inside, and when they're inside, it looks a lot better, okay? Desolate, but better. And when you're reading this, it, it reminds me of this. And I don't know if any of you guys have done this, but during lockdown and during COVID and all that shit, did you ever go to like one of those um, malls, like an indoor mall during COVID when there was like hardly anyone out? Go to one of these malls and not like the really big, like expansive, like glass ceiling ones where like the sun shining down but one of those ones that are pretty big but not huge and they don't have skylights through the whole thing maybe just one in the middle and it's kind of fucking dark and gloomy almost like you're in a fucking weird mausoleum and you're walking around and you could hear your footsteps so you try to be quieter just because it's weird to hear your footsteps echo if you have ever been in that situation, which I have, um, that's what this whole thing reminds me of when they get into this lost city. It's so cool. So anyway, when we get here, we end up um, finding out that it's not abandoned and that there is like a power struggle going on in like a Hatfield and McCoy kind of way. And it's a lot of fun. And then you have stuff like... Uh, what I don't want to give too much away here. Because if you know certain bits, like, surprises aren't that surprising. Okay, so basically, there are some things in here that are a lot of fun. There is a lot of, a lot of fighting, a lot of action, a lot of gory violence. A lot of the whole... Um, s &M, damsel in distress thing um and some of you might be like whoa s &M, damsel in distress thing like if you've read conan stories you know what i'm talking about it's not like s &M. come on guys it gets to the point it's just this story is so hard for me to read knowing it was the last one he wrote because i feel like maybe he wanted to do more with these characters together you know and I know that like a lot of the um, Conan novels that came out in the 80s and shit tried to bridge gaps between these books and and these ones too with El Sprague de Camp doing the little like um, what does he do where, where is a good explanation like right here like in italics meanwhile like, previously in Conan, that kind of shit to try to, like, tie everything together. But, um, I don't know. It's, like, a, an explosive ending, super satisfying. Um, you're worried about Conan. You're worried about Valeria. Um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. There's some human sacrifice shit going on. 
Um, there's some like vampiric kind of shit happening. Um, a lot of sorcery, um, all sorts of fun shit. So if that is the kind of sword and sorcery stuff you like, Red Nails is like such a good story for that. Um, and next time, I think, don't want to jump ahead of myself here, but I think we're going um, either Beyond the Black River or um, Jewels of Gwalhur or Teeth of Gwalhur, depending on what... It's, it's one of those two stories. I can't remember which one it is that we're doing next. But have you read Red Nails? That, that was hard to say. Um, have you read this? Did you enjoy it? What did you think of it? Let me know down below, and I will talk to you guys later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the Creo or the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.